this company and then you come monday to friday and then you come all through the month this is what you are going to have and then when at the end of the month you know the end of the month has come and you look and you check up and from monday to friday monday to friday all the four weeks of that month you have been there you have done everything you ought to do and now they come to their boss or they come to the director they come to you know whoever is paying out the salary and they stand there and they, they begin to cry they say oh cashier or whatever you know pay me my something and they cry and the fellow is saying what's happening to you this is your right this is your you know you worked for it already and the condition is if you will serve this company at the end of the month this is what will be done the same thing the lord is saying the lord is saying all i'm requesting from you is if you will serve the lord your god as the choir came here tonight what what were they doing they were serving the Lord. All those socials who are there, what are they doing? They're serving the Lord. All these uh, brethren who are working, what are they doing? They're serving the Lord. And the Lord said, if you will serve the Lord your God, here is what I'm going to do. Now, we have been faithful. We have served the Lord our God. And we're serving the Lord our God. Now, if we have been faithful, are we going to be more faithful than God? Tell me. No. If you have done your part, God will do his part. And I don't need to, you know, beg God and plead with God and roll on the ground and cry and scream and holler and say, oh Lord, here I am, look at this and look at me and then, you know, have some words or go and get, uh, you know, the way that other brother prays. How do you pray? How do you do that? Teach me. And then he teaches me and then I borrow that and then I go to God and say, God said, I don't need that. All I need for you is to serve me and wants to serve me here is what will automatically follow your service to the lord that makes prayer simple i said it makes prayer simple and tonight is your night look at that verse again if ye shall serve the lord your god and he shall bless thy bread give me a good amen there and thy water and i will take sickness away from the midst of thee the lord says if you do this you are faithful you're not going to be more faithful than god in fact sometimes when we're even unfaithful he still remains faithful how much more when we are faithful come and you come serve me and then you serve him pray unto me and you pray unto him read my word you read his word diligently hacking to my voice you hear his voice and then he says this is what i will do i rejoice with you tonight you are a miracle receiver in jesus name then he says in verse 26 there shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in thy land the number of thy days i will fulfill you will not die prematurely Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. I'm reading there from verse 12. Again, he's telling us something here. Look at what he says. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 12. He tells us, chapter 7, verse 12. Wherefore it shall come to pass. Wherefore it shall come to pass. Do you see the language of scripture? The Lord doesn't talk in a kind of a, a coded language. In a confusing language it doesn't talk in a doubtful language maybe maybe not if i'm in the mood to bless people that day when you come maybe i'll do it if i'm happy with myself and happy with the angels maybe i will do it if i'm happy with who whosoever maybe i'll do it just says wherefore it shall come to pass it says when you are coming have this at the back of your mind this is my promise and it says my integrity and my sovereignty is behind my word that's why it says if it shall come to pass if ye hack into these judgments and keep and do them that the lord thy god shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he swear unto thy fathers i will receive mercy today i said i will receive mercy today because that's what he said he said if you will do this then i'm going to give the mercy look at verse 15 and the lord will not the lord may not the lord could not the lord can yes of course we know he can he can do all things but he says he will and the lord will take away from thee from me i said for me all sickness you know there are some people that say lord 
I have, um, you know, three challenges on my life. I have this, I have this, I have this. Why don't you just help me and take this one away? Even if the other two are still there, I can tolerate, I can manage that. But help me take this one away. The Lord is saying he is going to take the majority of your sicknesses away. How many of them? all sickness and will put none he said this again will put none of the evil diseases of egypt which thou knowest upon thee i can rest assured now anything i see on any person in the world i'm sure because i'm not of the world nothing is not going to be on me and, and, and you know how the lord even divides a family for example here you are maybe there are five people in your family and there are two of you that know the Lord. You are people of God. You, you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You have given your life to Christ. And you are following the Lord. And the other three, they are not following the Lord yet. I'm sure they are coming, but they are not there yet. And then you hear that uh, so and so, maybe you senior sister, this is happening to them. And the other one, junior brother, this is happening to that one. And then you begin to panic. You say, um, senior sister has got it. My junior brother has got it. It's like like, you know this thing is coming near because that one i'm next to that one and this other one is next to me and it will soon get to me That's, the bible doesn't say that i said the bible doesn't say that all those who are not born again yet they are part of egypt all those who are born again now serving the lord they are part of the israel of god and whatever is happening to them will not happen to you because this is what the Lord said. And you will not be the exception to prove God a liar. To prove God, you know, a, an unfaithful God. That he's done it for everybody. Only for you he cannot do it. I don't believe that. I believe, i rather believe God and disbelieve you. I believe that you are not going to get that evil sin upon your life in Jesus' name. Because it says, all those Egyptian sicknesses, you know, will not be upon you. He will lay them upon all them that hate you give me a good amen. amen jeremiah now we're looking at the promises of god you see these promises and you see the language in which the promises are reaching is so is so definite and is so sure and this is what he said in world jeremiah chapter 30 and i'm reading here from verse 17 jeremiah chapter 30 we're looking at verse 17 again look at uh, the the form of the promise look at the pattern of the promise 30 verse 17 it says for i will restore health unto thee he says, you got it before, but you lost it. He says, don't worry about that. I'll restore it unto you. I will restore health unto thee. I will heal thee of thy wounds. I will heal thee of thy wounds. I'm going to be explaining tomorrow in morning session, the, you know, the various kinds of healing that we have, that the Lord has promised. But here it says, I will heal you of your wounds. There are some people that have internal wounds. There are people that have internal bleeding. The people that bleed, uh, you know, in the brain. The people that bleed in other delicate parts of the body. And the Lord is saying, even though people have not been able to reach out to you and remove that wound, tonight he's going to remove that wound in Jesus' name. He says, he says, says the Lord praise the lord they didn't see the lord i told you before they didn't see the lord directly but they saw jeremiah that was jeremiah telling them and jeremiah said this is not me i'm just the mouthpiece of the lord this is not me i'm just the microphone of the lord this is the word of the lord unto you and whether jeremiah is tall or short or is plumpy or big or whatever don't look at that all we look at is the fact that thus says the lord the lord is speaking to you tonight everything you are hearing is the word of the lord and the lord will be faithful to that word unto to you in jesus name and then it says because they called thee they called thee god doesn't call you that they called thee an outcast saying this is zion whom no man seeketh after yeah there's times uh, we feel rejected and there's some people that they equate men with god they say the voice of men tell me the rest in the voice of god but it's not so because it says over here they all the people call you outcast 
I mean, if you know that, if you know anything that is painful, it is rejection. When people reject you, you come this way, they reject you. You come that way, they push you away. And then you say, well, if they have rejected me, and there are even people that are, appear to know better, they, they know the Bible, they are even preachers themselves, or they are, you know, Christian people themselves, and then I try to get near them, they just reject me. If they have rejected me, doesn't that mean that God has rejected me? No, not at all. You see, because they call you. I'm not calling you that. They call you an outcast. And because they're even saying that, that's why I'm going to answer your prayer speedily. The more they hate you, the faster God will answer your prayer to show them that God is not like them. That if they will not favor you, Almighty God will favor you. If men reject you, God will receive you. You see the promise there? I will. I will. He will tonight in Jesus' name. This weekend, you should get rid of all these sicknesses and all these burdens and all these, uh, you know, limitations in your life. This uh, weekend, everything should be solved in Jesus' name. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 33. Verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 33. Verse 3. Call unto me. And I will answer thee. What if, um, you know, a director in the bank uh, just told you and he said, Hey, I see you are bearing your body all alone while I'm here. I see that you are suffering this. I didn't know you were going through all that. I see that you, this is the way you are. All right, now, call unto me and I will answer. Tell me what the need is for this one, for this one, for that one, for that one. Just call unto me and I will answer. If a man had told you that, you say, praise the Lord, you begin to then write down number one, number two, number three. I need to talk to this man because he gave the promise. I didn't force him to do that. He, this is what he said. And if you will do that to a man, how about God? When the almighty God himself, with him all things are possible. He has all power. He has all provision. He has made all the promises and then he says call unto me and i will answer thee and i will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not this weekend i want to see some great miracles i've never seen how to experience some great great things i've never seen because that's what he said i'll show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not your time has come I want you to look at uh, Ezekiel chapter 12. We'll be reading about the promises. Look at the comment of the Lord and look at uh, the final note of the Lord on the promises that he himself has given. We're looking at Ezekiel chapter 12. Ezekiel chapter 12. And I'm reading from verse 25. For I am the Lord. Did he say I was? No, I am. Did he say I will be? Tell me. He said, I am, I am the Lord. I will speak, and the word that I speak shall come to pass. Praise the Lord. He said, I will speak. That means, I'm going to give you the promise. All these promises we have been reading, that's what he has been giving us. And he says, when I give you this promise, he says, it shall come to pass. And says, it shall no more be prolonged. You know, some people say, the Lord gave me a word two years ago. The Lord gave me a word three years ago. And you know, it was in a dream, a vision. Or maybe the ministers were singing or the ministers were preaching. And the word came to me directly. This is from the Lord. And I'm sure he gave me that word. And I'm still looking for the, pro, uh, for the fulfillment. The Lord said, the time for the fulfillment has come. It shall no more be prolonged. For in your days, so rebellious house, will I say the word and will perform it, says the Lord God. My day of performance has come. Look at verse 28. Therefore say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, There shall none of my words be prolonged anymore. No more delay for you. I said no more delay for you then it goes on it said but the word which i have spoken shall be done says the lord god say it shall be done i will be healed i will be delivered my prayer will be answered my time of breakthrough has come it will be done in jesus name now when some people give you promises you need to find out what resources do they have before you rejoice 
You need to find out what power does he have? He has given me that promise. How am I sure he's able to do it? Maybe he's faithful, but is he powerful? Is he mighty? Does he have the authority? Does he have the resources to do everything he has told me he's going to do? You need to find that out. Now, God has given us promises. The question is, does he have the power to get that done? That leads me to the next point. God's power for our healing. God's power for our healing. All I want to find out is that God has given me a promise. He said, I will heal you. He said, I will deliver you. He said, I will do a new thing. He said, I will do great things. He said, now it shall spring forth. I want to find out how much power does he have to do that. If he has little power, he can do some little things. If he has moderate power, he can do some moderate things. If he has big power, he can do some bigger things. If he has unlimited power, then he can do unlimited things. And I'm going to show you in the word of God. Look at Psalm 62. Psalm 62. I'm reading from verse 11. Psalm 62, verse 11. God has spoken once, twice have I had this, that power belongeth unto God. Please uh, note uh, the verb there. Power belongeth unto God. That is, it belonged to God in the past. Of course, everybody knows that. When he divided the Red Sea, that's power. When he made uh, the walls of Jericho to fall down flat, that's power. And when he stopped the sun in its course, in its trajectory, that's power. But not that's in the past. But he says, power belongeth unto God. It's not only in the past. You see, there are people that say, God used to do this. Their God is a God that has been. Their God that has done something in the past. But they don't know whether he has it today. But it says, power belongeth unto God. This day of your challenge, this day of your problem, this day of seeking the Lord, power still belongs unto God. And that power will be made to bear your life in Jesus' name. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, reading there from verse 4. If you know the titles of the Lord, he is a creator, he is king, he is Lord, he is the Lord of lords and the king of all kings, the greatest king, the almighty. And Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4 says, where the word of a king is, tell me, there is power. There is power. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Hold on for a minute. Where is the word of the king? The word of the king. We can say, okay, the word of the king is in the Bible. That's true. That means there's power in the Bible. Where is the word of God? The word of the Lord, the word of the king is in our church. You know, some people say, they know our church. They say, that is a Bible-believing church. Would you agree with that? I say, would you agree with that? And they will say, even those who are not members of our church here, they say, we know one thing. As for, you know, they may not do this or do this or do that. But if you want to hear the word of God, the word of the Lord, they say, go to that place because the word of the Lord is there. What they say is that the word of the king is there. If the word of the king is here, then what is here? Power is there. Because where the word of the king is, there, there is power. Now, tonight... What have we been reading since I came on here and I opened this and opened that Old Testament, New Testament and then we flip on through the Bible? What am I reading to you? The word of the Lord. Tonight, is the word of the king here tonight? Tell me out loud. Where the word of a king is, there, there is power. Is there power here tonight? Now, in your own heart, it says, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth but you will read it meditate upon it to observe to do it so that you will prosper you'll have good success the word of the lord apart from being in the bible apart from being in the church apart from being here tonight is also where in your heart in your heart and where the word of the king is there is power any power inside you there how do you know I said, how do you know? 
Because the word of God is inside you. If the word of God is there, the power of God is there. It is not your feeling. It is not like, you know, I feel hot, I feel whatever. It is the word of God being there. And thank God the word of God is in every heart. And then when you have the word of God in all these hearts here today, and then the power of God is there, something is going to happen. From the pulpit, the word is coming out. Power is coming out. And then from you, when I say something, you say amen. The word is there and the power is there. And when I manifest the power, you then respond to the power. And then there's an explosion of power. All those things will be blown away from your life in Jesus' name. Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, watch doest thou. I come to Jeremiah again, chapter 32. It looks like Jeremiah has a lot to tell us tonight because the word of the Lord is with him and because that word is with him, that's why he's getting it out to you and to me. Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah chapter 32. I'm reading from verse 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh, the God of the God of I'm waiting for you. The God of You know, sometimes uh, the, the people, there are some people, they say, well, maybe God can walk among, I'm not a Pentecostal, they say. I'm just, you know, I, and I belong to the Orthodox Church. I belong to the Evangelical Church. You see, those uh, Pentecostal people, when they stand like this, and, and they shout and they pray. I cannot pray like that. I am not Pentecostal. That's all right. That's all right because it says, I'm the God of Pentecostal flesh, Catholic flesh, Protestant flesh, Baptist flesh, and all the, you know, all flesh. Am I right? Nigerian flesh, Ghanaian flesh and british flesh i am the god of all flesh wherever you are coming from it doesn't really matter you see there are people that disqualify themselves they say because i am not there i am here is the god of all because i'm not here there i'm here is the god of all it says i am the god of all flesh in fact even rotting flesh diseased flesh sick flesh tired flesh all the flesh i'm the god of all flesh there is nothing too hard for me that's why i can talk to you confidently tonight that something is going to happen to you because i can see that you all your flesh i can see the flesh right there and if he's the god of all flesh and he says whatever concerns you is going to do something and tonight is that night he will do it in jesus name now i come to the new testament and i'm looking at um, chapter one of luke luke chapter one and i'm reading here from verse 35 luke chapter one verse 35 luke chapter one verse 35 the god of all flesh and the god of all power and is able to manifest that power in our lives we will do it tonight it says and the angel answered and said unto her the holy ghost shall come upon upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee the power of the highest shall overshadow thee the angel was talking to mary and mary was wondering this thing you are telling me is too good to be true i've never had something like this before how is it i'm a virgin i've never met any man and i'm going to have a baby boy and his name will be called jesus how can that be because i know not a man and he said it's not what who you know or you don't know it's not where you have been or where you have not been it's not the village you are raised up or the city you are raised up it says it's the power of the highest that will overshadow you and come upon you and that power is here tonight that means you throw a world that you have been thinking how will this happen to my wife is the power of the high that will come upon her i will look at this child look at the way the child was born and look at the condition of the child the power of the highest will come upon that child tonight in jesus name and then you've been to you know the hospital and they have examined you and then you say this and that and you say huh this is a serious case with god is not as serious as that I said it's not as serious as that because if the God of all flesh and then the power of the highest shall overshadow you, therefore also the holy sin that shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Look at verse 37 for with God, for with God, don't let the devil catch you read the Bible like that. I'm saying with God. 
let, let everybody hear you and let even yourself you know you must listen to yourself when you read something like that if you're expectant if you're hopeful if you know that something is going to happen there's a way you will say this is mine i've been looking for this verse for a long time and look at this this is mine everybody say this is mine now read it as if it belongs to you and hey, look verse 37 one two three go for with god nothing shall be impossible that's what the angel said and of course the angel knew the nature of god he knew the might of he knew the power of god is coming from heaven he said I, I i know that god we're living in his presence and mary i'm telling you something when god says he wants to do something i'm coming right from his presence i'm the angel of his presence and i can tell you that with god nothing shall be impossible when uh, the angel told mary that then mary went to the house of elizabeth because the angel said if you don't understand what i'm saying do remember elizabeth that's your cousin she is now pregnant in her old age look at verse 45 and this is what uh, elizabeth said and blessed is she that believed that believed for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the lord give me a good amen, amen i'm just wondering now elizabeth how did you come to this is why i said my husband was in the temple ministry and this images that appeared to mary appeared to my husband and said god has answered your prayer and thank god he has answered your prayer and then he said you are going to have a child the name is going to be called john and then my husband you know the grass said how can this be because we're old already and then the angel said what god will do he will do i said what god will do he will do but because you didn't believe uh, you know god is merciful you know god could have said uh -uh, because you didn't believe that i take that john i take that a miracle i take that baby miracle baby i take it away from you god said you'll see that the miracle but you're going to have an additional miracle you'll not be able to speak for nine months so that every day as you're not able to speak that that's a miracle on, on its own isn't that a miracle he said because you go through that miracle of not being able to speak for nine months every day you remember john is coming miracle boy, baby is coming my miracle is coming your miracle is coming in jesus name if it happened to zechariah who doubted god when god said the word and god said whatever you have said that's not my problem whatever you feel that's not my problem i will do what i will do and now elizabeth was pregnant a six months pregnancy that's why when mary came to elizabeth elizabeth said mary mother of my lord she already knew even without mary telling her people will know those who have eyes to see they will see you are carrying a miracle they'll see that god has spoken to you and that thing is said to you it is going to come to pass in jesus name you know as we walk out through those uh, doors tonight somebody looks at you that you didn't even know when angel gabriel came to you when anybody spoke to you just looking at your face looks like you've got something i said looks like you've got something and so and then elizabeth said the baby inside me lived when you came in you know something is going to happen your presence is going to make a difference anywhere you go from tonight in jesus name that's why he said mary my husband did not believe but i'm carrying a miracle there for you now don't do it like my husband believe that's why she said blessed is she that believed for there shall be a performance there shall be a performance as you are going home tonight you just tell yourself i thank god there shall be a performance as you're sleeping tonight there shall be a performance when you wake up tomorrow morning there shall be a performance when you come here tomorrow there shall be a performance when you greet and you know somebody says how are you today what's your answer there shall be a performance were you there last night what's your answer there shall be a performance what did you ask the lord last night answer there shall be a performance and you look so happy today what's happening to you you're, you're not always like this i saw you the other time are you looking so happy today what's the answer 
There shall be a performance. A performance has come in Jesus' name. There shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. That's because God is powerful. Look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 10. Acts of the Apostles chapter 10 and see the power of Christ, the power of God manifested everywhere he went. In, um, in Acts of the Apostles chapter 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He still has that power. I said he still has that power. And then he said, who went about doing evil? Making people sick? What? You know some people, if uh, they have a sickness, they say, they pray and they say, oh God, I have this sickness. Praise, they say, Lord, I am sick. Praise the Lord. I'm suffering. Praise the Lord. I have pain. Everything they say, they punctuate it with praise the Lord. And then they say, if you want to remove the sickness, let thy will be done. I don't pray like that. Do you pray like that? If you have been praying, change that prayer. You know, I'm sick. Praise the Lord. Are you praising her because you are sick? I'm poor, praise the Lord. I have bad dreams, praise the Lord. I'm being oppressed, praise the Lord. I'm going to praise the Lord when I see that miracle. And that miracle is coming. I said that miracle is coming. Who anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about, tell me, doing good and healing some and healing many and healing the women and healing the men who did he heal healing all that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him and part of those who have explained that healing my my healing is sure in jesus name god has the power christ has the power i about those of us who are here today do we have the power let's look at matthew chapter 10 matthew chapter 10 and i'm reading here from verse 1 matthew chapter 10 and we're looking at it from verse 1 matthew chapter 10 verse 1 it says in matthew 10 verse 1 and when he had called unto him his 12 disciples he gave them he gave them he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease praise the lord that's why i told you it's going to happen i said it's going to happen because he gave them power he has given us power those who are the uh, 12 he gave the power i'm looking at luke chapter 10 luke chapter 10 and i'm reading here from verse 19 luke chapter 10 verse 19 behold i give unto you power i don't need to you know be jealous of peter what he gave him he has given me you don't need to be jealous of paul what he gave him he has given you because he says i give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions over all the and over all the power of the enemy you will cancel you will crush you will destroy all the power of the enemy in your life in jesus name and then it says to tread power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and i love this one i love this and nothing shall by enemies hurt you and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You are free in Jesus' name. Number one, the promises. Number two, the power. Number three, the prayer. And this number three is guided prayer for our healing. Guided prayer for our healing. You see, sometimes uh, we need to be guided the way we pray and to know how to pray we should look at the people in the bible days that prayed especially when jesus christ was here on earth and you'll see how the people prayed and you'll see that you know and if your prayer is different from theirs i think we need to know which one to change for example i see the saturn came there's a way he spoke to the lord jesus christ and he got the answer if the way you have been speaking to the lord is different from the way that saturn spoke to the lord you know they got the answer if you are not getting the answer then you change then you find a you know a blind a man blind Bartimaeus. you know came to the lord jesus christ and then he spoke he 
prayed unto the Lord. And then the Lord answered. If the way you have been praying is different from the way they prayed, then somebody has to change. And then you find that the woman that came and said, my daughter is going through this and going through that. Uh, please help me. And then Jesus gave an answer. And then the woman gave an answer. And then from the answer Jesus, Jesus received from her, the prayer was answered. If the way you have been praying is different from the way she prayed, then somebody has to change. And it's not difficult to change. It's not to say, okay, I've been saying it wrong. I've not been doing it right. It's just like when you, you are given a form to fill. And they say, submit this form. And then you will claim this benefit that belongs to you. Already you've seen that all these promises, they give you the benefits. That, you know, if you make your request to the Lord, these are the promises. And he has the power to do it. He's going to do it. And then you pray, you offer your prayer to God. After offering the prayer, you are looking for the answer. Nothing came. You say, well, what happened here? God is not at fault. God is all right. I said, God is all right. If the answer has not come, get that form back again and look at that form. How did you feel that? Ah, ah, I see the problem here now. It's the way you filled that form. And then look at somebody that filled a similar form before. And then he sent in that form and then the answer came. And then change what you need to change and make sure that your form is all right. If you feel that form right, your benefit will come. If you pray that prayer aright, your answer will come. Let me, let me show you how they did it. In Matthew chapter 8, guided prayer. Guided prayer for our healing. Guided prayer for our healing. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. That's the promised part of it. Jesus said, don't worry about that. I, can, I have the power to do that. And I'm giving you the promise I will come and heal him. Listen to this man. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy. Well, we all agree with that. In fact, that's about the only thing some people say when they pray. Oh, Lord, I'm not worthy. Oh, Lord, I'm not worthy. Say more than that. Because just saying that alone does not give you the answer. See the other people that prayed. Guided prayer for our healing. And be guided by the way they prayed. He said, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But, even though I am not worthy, you are worthy. You are mighty. You are powerful. There is nothing impossible for you. Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. He said, that's all I need. And you see, speak the word. That depends on the source that is the person from the channel, from the place the word is coming from. Not the way I feel. Not how tall I am. Not where I've been. Not what I have. Not how much money I have. Whatever. But you speak the word. Everything now resides in you. What if you pray that kind of guided prayer? And say, Lord, your servant is there. Put the word in his mouth. And once he speaks against my sickness, I'm all right. You'll be all right. Once he speaks against my oppression, I know I'm all right. You'll be all right in Jesus' name. Guided prayer prayer. Let your prayers be guided. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. He said, I command people, you command sickness. I command people, you command evil spirits. You tell them to go, they will go. And then look at this in verse 10. And when Jesus had it, he marveled and said, to them that followed verily i say unto you i have not found so great faith no not in israel verse 13 and jesus said unto the centurion go thy way and as thou hast believed tell me so be it done unto thee and tonight i'm standing uh, you know in place i'm standing for christ representing him and i'm saying tonight go your way that problem is solved. Yeah. Go your way. That sickness is healed. Yeah. Go your way. That sickness, that infirmity is removed in Jesus' name. Yeah. And then it says, And his servant was healed in the cell same hour. 
Thank God it has happened. We're looking at uh, Matthew chapter 15. Remember guided prayer. Not for the men. Already you see the example of a man here that said, Here is to speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Your wife will be healed. Your husband will be healed. Your children will be healed. In fact, you know, the boy was not there. The servant was not there. The servant was far away somewhere. And this man says, speak the word. Speak the word here without even seeing that child that was sick. That I know that the child is going to be well. You know, you can, you can put it down tonight. You have somebody sick back at home in your country. And then that person is so close. A mother, a nephew, a cousin, an uncle. And you are so much concerned. Tonight, as we speak the word here a miracle is happening over there already somebody is in the hospital and you know the person could come here tonight and then we speak the word here and then you are standing by proxy for that individual and the miracle is coming upon that individual in jesus name matthew chapter 15 i'm reading here from verse 21 and jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and sidon and behold a woman of canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. But again, remember what we're talking about, guided prayer for our healing. See what other people did. See how they did it. How they never gave up. You will not give up. I said you will not give up. You know, some people, they get up and then they say, they say, okay, they say we should say it this way. And then they say it, and then their mind is not in what they are saying. Their heart is not in what they are saying. And their confidence or trust or faith is not in what they are saying. And they just say it. And then nothing happens. They say, well, you know, but they said that if we say it this way, it will happen. And nothing happened. They say, I don't think this thing will work. For me, it will work. I said, for me, it will work it will work for you in jesus name it says in that uh, verse 20 in verse 20 but he answered him not a word and his disciples came and besought him saying send her away for she cried after us some people cannot stand that they say you don't have love in that place you know i'm so burdened i'm so concerned about my daughter and i came and instead of they helping me to get near jesus they told jesus to send me where i told you that peter paul that peter john james matthew rejects you that doesn't mean that god has rejected you you know there's some people they, they put all their confidence in a particular man and if a man frowns at them they think god is frowning at them if uh, some ladies frown at them they think that god is frowning at them if uh, you know a group of a clique of people frowns at them they think that god is frowning at them all the frowns of men will not change the promise of god he loves you all the same he accepts you all the same and he's going to bless you all the same and this woman knew that he saw them when they went to jail they said cast her away send her away she's crying out she's a nuisance She's making a noise. They didn't see what she said as prayer request. They didn't see this as a burden flowing out, being poured out unto God. They said, she's making a noise. And then, uh, look at this in verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That means, uh, you know, she, if she interpreted that, the way other people interpret it means she's not qualified she cannot get this then look at the next verse then came she and worshipped him as if she did not hear all that the conversation that had been going on she wasn't concentrating on what peter said what john said what james said what all these people said and then even what jesus said i'm not saying but unto the house of Israel, she came as if she didn't hear anything you know sometimes you must act like that because while we're while i'm talking and i'm saying this and this the devil is whispering something and saying huh the pastor doesn't know your own peculiar problem. The pastor is talking to all the other people but you. You know the problem. You know how serious it is. You know how much you are fasted. And you know how this cannot work like that. You will act as if you didn't hear. What did I say? Act as if you didn't hear. And then, you know, somebody is saying, but you've seen, uh, you know, Pastor Peter before. You've seen, uh, you know, Pastor John. You've seen Pastor Matthew. And, you know, nothing happened. And so, what do you think is going to happen? You will act as if you didn't hear 
guided prayer for healing. That's what he did. That's how God answered their prayer. And you know, when you block your mind and your ears as to what they are saying, whoever they are, whether they call them apostle or prophet or evangelist or whatever, just act as if you didn't hear and keep on looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Because I know Jesus is different from Peter. Jesus is higher than John. Jesus is higher than Matthew. And they don't understand, but he understands. And I know that what Jesus is saying is just testing my faith. He's testing how serious I am. And tonight, I am serious. I'm going to get something. I said I'm going to get something. Uh, look, at, look at what it, go, it says now. And then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said... This is a test. I pray that whatever test comes, you're going to pass your test in Jesus' name. And you know, it's not a test of one week. It's not a test of one year. It's not that God is going to make you stay there in that problem for one year. This is just within about five or ten minutes that he went, she went through all this. You will go through in Jesus' name. And then he said, it is not meat, it is not right, it is not fit to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she said, truth, Lord, he said, uh, anything you say, you're truth personified. You say, I'm a dog, truth, Lord. You say, you don't want to cast the children's bread onto dog, truth, Lord. Anything Jesus says, what do you say? Guided prayer, guided prayer. Say what they said. Have the same attitude as, if, as they had. Don't say, that disqualifies me. That means I cannot receive anything. That means I'm too bad. That, that means I'm too sinful. He came to save sinners. If you are sinful, he will save you. He came to forgive sinners. If you have sinned, God will forgive you through Christ in Jesus' name. And then she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. You're still my master. Even if I'm a dog, you're still my master. You're still my Lord. I still belong to you. I may not belong to you on the same platform as Peter belongs to you, as John belongs to you, as the Israelites belongs to you, but I still belong to you. I didn't create myself. You created me. I belong to you, and you will do this for me. When you have that kind of attitude and response, something good is coming your way. Verse 28, then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. It has happened. I said it has happened. You know, before Jesus says any other thing, once he tells you that great is your faith, you came here today in your condition, great is thy faith. That means he's about to say another thing that will finalize everything tonight in your life in Jesus' name. He says, be it unto thee as even as thou wilt. And her daughter was her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Thank God they will do it in Jesus' name. I said they will do it in Jesus' name. I want you to look at uh, John chapter 2. John chapter 2. Guided prayer for our healing. Guided prayer for healing. You see how the, the, the attitude of the people, the way they acted and the way they spoke to the Lord. And that's what the Lord is saying. Be guided in the way you talk to the Lord. And if you are guided like what they did, you'll get the same thing they got in Jesus' name. I'm looking at John chapter 2. I'm reading there from verse, from verse, uh, from verse 3. And when they wanted wine, they lacked wine, they desired wine, they, they demanded for wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, they have no wine. Look at verse 4. Jesus says unto a woman, What have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. That will put off some people. Once, uh, you know, uh, they came and then, hey, Pastor, Pastor, I have this need. I don't have time now. That puts them off. That means, okay, but he is the one that was just telling us now, come, and then we're going to attend to you. This weekend is for everybody, and God is not going to reject anyone. And I come with my body, and I said, you know, Pastor, Pastor, can I, you know, have your time? Just two minutes. I don't have time now. They don't know it's a test. You will pass your test. You will not give up. I said you will not give up. Because this challenge, this problem, this weekend, it must be solved. It will be solved in Jesus' name. So, when Jesus said, Woman, what have I to do with thee? 
my hour is not yet come. His mother says to the servants, whatsoever he says unto you, do it. Even though he said, what have I got to do with you? I don't, I'm not going to perform a miracle now. This is not the time now. My hour has not yet come. Then she has already expressed what she wanted to express. And she knew something is coming on the way. And I said something is coming on the way. And so he just he said, servants, get ready. I know he's going to tell you something. And whatever he tells you, it may look ridiculous. It may look unreal. It may look unrealistic. Whatsoever he says unto you, do it. And there was, and there was set there six water pots of stone. After the manner of the purifying of the Jews, continue two or three fucking apiece. Jesus says unto them, fill the water pots with water. What did they do? I said, what did they do? Did they say, a point of correction, sir, we're not asking for water. We know where the water is. What are we looking for? Wine. Don't argue. What did I say? If you don't, just do as they said. Guided prayer. Guide yourself. And say, looks like I've been, I've been too intelligent for God. I've been too argumentative for God. Every time the Lord says, this is what to do, I say, God, a point of correction. This is what I'm asking. This is what I'm saying. Don't correct God. He will correct you. You cannot correct him. Give me a good amen. amen. Look at this now in verse, it says, and what did they do? And they filled them to the brim exactly what he said and then he says unto them draw out now i thought you will pray i thought you will lay your hand on these water pots and command and do something fill it up they filled it up draw it out now don't argue that's what he said what he said we're going to do and when you do what he said we're going to do you've got the miracle already in jesus name when he says stand up just stand up you know, I remember I was, uh, you know, in, uh, it was uh, New York uh, some few years ago that we were at meeting like this. And uh, I don't think there were even more than the people I see here tonight. And then when we finished, I was standing in front there and, you know, shaking people's hand. And then, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, you know, come again. Thank you for coming. Come again. And there was somebody on the wheelchair, you know, at the back over there. And then as she saw the he saw a man, saw the boat saying, uh, thank you for coming. Come again. All of a sudden, you know, somebody just said, why don't you stand up and go and greet the pastor? She did, he didn't say, look at me where I am, my condition. He said, okay, if these people are, I'm going to shake the pastor's hand tonight, all of a sudden, she got up. And then walked to the front, and then, you know, shook my hands, and then she said, tell me what to tell the other people. I said, thank you for coming, come again. That miracle is coming upon you tonight in Jesus' name. You see, that's how they did it, and that's how we are going to do it, and I'm telling you that today, tomorrow, and Sunday, something is happening already. It's taking place already in Jesus' name. And then he said, draw it out now, and bear to the governor of the, of the feast, and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast I tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was but the servants which drew the water knew the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and says unto him every man at the beginning does uh, set forth good wine and when men have well drunk then they which then that which is worse but thou hast kept this good miracle wine until now it's been kept for you i said it is kept for you this is the beginning of miracles jesus did in cana of galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him today is your own beginning it's going to happen how many people are expectant and you know it's coming you know it's coming I say, you know, it's coming. Why don't you stand up? I say, this is my time. The beginning of the miracles. The beginning of the miracles. It will happen. It's coming your way. It's coming your way. Just remember all that was said. Number one, the promises. Number two, the power. Number three, the prayer. Number one is God's promises. The promises have been given to you. You just open your mouth. I'll pray for you later. But just open your mouth and tell the Lord, this is what I'm asking. 
this is what i'm asking this is my request before the and remember all things are possible all things are possible unto god he has the power he has the might this is going to happen whether you are seated or standing just believe god just believe god this is going to happen this is going to happen this is my request this is my request this is my request it will happen tell the lord remember the promise standing on the promises that cannot fail these promises that cannot fail the enemy may try to assail but the enemy has failed tonight a miracle is yours the power that rose diseases demonic afflictions away that power is coming your way tonight believe God believe God believe God don't just think about my condition this is my condition don't think about that look up to the Lord looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of your face is there is here is here and is going to do it he has the power beyond your feeling beyond the emotion beyond your tiredness doesn't matter he is for you guided prayer guided prayer say the word speak the word only I will be healed speak the word only and I'm all right. Speak the word only. My problems are gone. Speak the word only. I'm free. Speak the word only. That tumor is going. Speak the word only. The demise sight is going to be bright. Speak the word only. This child that was born deformed is going to get well. Speak the word only. That night oppression, affliction, demonic personality. Tonight is the end of that personality in my life. Speak the word only. And this thing I've been looking for for a long time, this document is coming out. Speak the word only. All that negative reports on the x-ray and everything is going to be corrected tonight. Speak the word only. That's how they said it and that's what happened. It's your master, it's your lord, it's your savior. Just tell him, I give myself to you completely. I belong to you. I belong to you. I don't belong to the devil, I belong to Christ. I accept him as my savior, as my lord, as my king. He is the king of my life. And where the king is, there is power there. There is power residing in you there because the king is there. The lord is there. This is your moment to receive. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen with a conviction. Yeah. It will be done. Yeah. I said it will be done. Yeah. Now already you have spoken to the Lord. I'm going to take all the words who spoken to the Lord. I'm going to now stand in for you. And I'm going to present it before the Lord. And when you hear the final amen, I know it's done. Yeah. You have a testimony in your mouth tonight in Jesus' name. If you want to raise up your hand, that will be all right. That will be all right. And if you want to lay the other hand where the problem is, let's drive this sin away. Let's drive it out. Has no right to be there. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, and all those sins they will not remain. They will not stand there in Jesus' name. And of course, if you are married and you know there has not been any child, you know, praise the Lord. We're here tonight. Miracle baby coming your way. And then you know we say job and then uh, maybe you have been out of job and this and that thank the lord all that is coming back tonight in jesus name 
everything the enemy has been sitting on in your life i tell them get up there and release that thing a breakthrough for the people of god in jesus name i receive my miracle i receive my miracle i receive my miracle get ready now it's coming your way father in the name of jesus we thank you tonight because we know you are the god of all power which you all things are possible i present all our brothers and sisters here before you i pray tonight you will open the windows of heaven shower your blessings upon them in jesus name lord i pray for those who are not far from the kingdom but not in the kingdom yet i pray lord draw them into the kingdom as they turn away from any other personality any other power they turn away from any idol they turn away from any any sin and they now take you as the lord of their lives as the king of their lives as the savior and lord of their lives oh lord forgive them and save them in jesus name now that they belong to you lord i pray all miracles everything they open their mouth to tell you that this is what they want i pray oh lord do it for them in jesus name every form of sickness your body i command that sickness come out in jesus name that swelling in your body on the chest on the breast on the neck in the you know any other way any other place the earlier i command that swelling come out in jesus name and i command that a head that is pounding as if a migraine headache and i pray they'll be calm right there now in jesus name and the one that uh, urinates without any control just you know here and there it's like before you get to the toilet you know everything has come out i command that there'll be a control right now oh lord touch this individual and heal her in jesus name i'm asking lord for that person that has the the um, uh, the pal that is coming out pray right now the miracle that you have been waiting for for a long time you know with hardship and with real pain you will always go to a toilet and i'm asking lord that you touch them right now heal him in jesus name and that uh, fibroid over there the one thing that is swollen there they call it cyst or whatever i pray that right now it will melt away i know that you have the power which you all things are possible and i'm asking lord right now you touch this individual with your mighty power and that thing like a ball there that is stony i command melt away come out in jesus name and the one that has been having the oppression in the dream you know they always come and you want to shout you cannot shout they will press you down it's like when you wake up you are sweating as if they want to you know seize your life i command that personality get out of that place in jesus name and then sometimes uh, you know that person that was look like you are seeing personality or you sense they are following after you and you're always looking back and i command all those personalities that are following these people and uh, disturbing their lives harassing their lives i command you don't have that right to do that anymore come out in jesus name and lord i pray for these uh, couples that have been saying but lord how long we've been married they are counting years and they say i'll soon reach at this age when maybe there are nothing there will be nothing again right now i pray there'll be a breakthrough for you that you have had the womb of a young lady once again in jesus name and i pray for the husband that lord reproductive system you touch them and perform your miracle in jesus name i pray lord for you know that person when you are blinking your eyes it's like a, you are pain there or sun there that you know it's always irritating you there and i'm asking right now that you touch them right now lord and take that away in jesus name the arthritis and the pain and the muscles that are not functioning uh, cannot walk cannot stand cannot do whatever i pray that power will come into your bones right now and authority will destroy your spirit of, and the name of jesus i'm asking right now be healed in jesus name that strength will come into your waist strength will come into your ankles strength will come into every part of your body rise up and walk in jesus name Oh lord i pray for that person that you know the air on your head is just falling out and you try this cream and try that cream and try that and everything is still like that i'm asking right now that you touch her miraculously and all the all that has fallen all she has lost bring everything back in jesus name perform the miracle oh lord in jesus name lord all those who are looking for this document that document i've you know sent it to the home affairs and home office and all that and nothing is coming out come today come another time i pray that right now will be their time yeah. do it for them miraculously in jesus name 
Lord, I pray for those who have been out of job and, you know, the, living from hand to mouth and, you know, begging and all that. I pray that right now your prosperity will come. Your breakthrough will come. And all the things that have hindered you until this day, I take all that limitation away from your life in Jesus' name. Uh, that, that family, the husband and wife, it's like there's a reach, you know, do you, when you're out, you smile and all that, but it's like, uh, there, there's something that is not resolved in the family, and it's like, you know, you are back, you are, you are turning your backs against each other, and bitterness, and hatred, and you know, you cannot follow along, and, and all that, and then at home, it's like, you know, things are not alright, but right now, I bring peace into that family. I bring your joy and your love into that family. And I pray that all that the enemy has been trying to do to separate them, I pray that you break the, you, you break the yoke in that family in Jesus' name. And, and that person that said, you know, I had a curse before in my life, and this is what they pronounced. And, and since I came over here, I've been seeing that thing following after me. I tried to hold on to this, and then it's gone because of that curse. The curse, costless, shall not come. Shall not take root in your life. And that all that cause, I cancel it in Jesus' Jesus name deliver your people Lord Lord I pray that this weekend will be a weekend of rejoicing a weekend of miracle and all your people here no exception every brother every sister every, every boy and every girl everyone here hearing the sound of my voice they have heard your voice and they have listened to your voice according to your promise fulfill it in their lives in Jesus name miracle everywhere on my right miracle to my left miracle in the middle their miracle at the back their miracle at the gallery their miracle touch them lord and fulfill your word even right now put joy in every heart testimony in every mouth thank you lord because i know you have answered in jesus name we pray and everybody said Amen. i am blessed i said i am blessed I said I am blessed. Your miracle will be permanent in Jesus' name.